Right, a very good evening to everybody who is uh, joining this call uh, today with us and who are going to join later on, uh, probably doing this call while it's live or probably later on when this is part of a video on our particular channel. Welcome once again. We have uh, a cracking webinar in store for you today. It's a very good evening, evening to everybody who is yet you understand a little bit about IMT Gazibad, the life around IMT Gazibad, the questions that you have around mm. IMT Gazibad. And, uh, you know, it's the time when you search for your dream green school the most on Google. And Google is probably one of the most referred sources for you. But oftentimes what happens is Google does not provide you a sort of concise uh, you know information bank for you so we thought why not make your life a little easier uh, and help you guys find uh, information that you find useful in order to be part of this particular institute so what is going to happen in the next one hour in the next one hour we are going to ask uh, harvinder singh who is here who is the admissions chair uh, for pgt pgdm uh, at imt uh, gazibad hi harvinder thank you for joining us today uh, you, Purnanshu, and thanks for having me on this platform. Right. And uh, along with the Harvinder, I have Shu Agarwal, who is the uh, class of 2023 PGDM marketing student. He is going to give you uh, his bit about what his life at IMP Gazeban has been and the kind of uh, things that he had in mind probably when he was trying to get into this particular institute and what he experienced in these two years. Uh, you also get a chance to ask questions uh, to her, both Harvinder and Shubh here. Uh, we'll definitely try and take as many questions as possible and solve your queries and doubts in this particular session. And I have a few questions that I have seen uh, over Google, over Quora, over all the other platforms where you have asked a lot of questions. So without further ado, we are going to start our session by asking Harvinder you this question, you know, you were saying that you have been part of this institute for the last 12 years, right? Uh, is this just the Chole Bhature that you get right outside your, uh, you know, campus that has made you stood there for so long or, uh, you know, there is more to IMT and Gazibad in general that you like? Well, if I had taken Chole Bhature outside the campus for more than two years, I would have been dead by now. Correct. So the very fact that I have surviving after 12 years, it means I have not survived all. <laughs> I am a member of, by the way, I'm a member of mess committee also. And our mess serves amazing food. So uh, that, that's one reason. Uh, see, uh, when I joined IMT Ghaziabad, I was looking for a place which gives me a few uh, uh, values. For example, I was looking for a good brand name, competitive students, good compensation, and good quality of life and good quality of work life. So Ghaziabad, as you see, is such, I mean, honestly speaking, at that stage, 12 years back, we were having an explosion of new IIMs. Fine. So uh, many of my colleagues have actually taken a call and they have joined new IIMs. But see, uh, as a family man, uh, the dilemma was the location. I mean, many of these campuses are, I mean, at God for second places. I mean, honestly, it's very really difficult for the family to manage and survive. And the beauty of IMT Ghaziabad is it's bang in the heart of the city. You walk out of the campus, you cross the road, you are in the heart of the city. Everything is available at a uh, walking distance. So when I joined there, spent some time, I realized it's a good employer. Students are amazing. Uh, we are among the best pay masters in the field of academics, quality of life, amazing competitive colleagues. And on top of it, I can actually manage my personal life. Living in Delhi NCR, and just half an hour drive away from my workplace. It, it's like a dream, actually. And is it a dream for you, Shubh, as well? Where are you from? Uh, what is your background? Tell us a little bit about that. And uh, what is IMT Gazabad theme? So I, I hail from Lucknow and have completed my bachelor's in commerce from Lucknow University. Other than that, IMT Gazabad is famous for its alumni base. It has a huge alumni base. Wherein you name any corporate giant and you will find the IMT alum there. Other than that, another reason for joining the institute was that it, it has renowned faculty that was respected professionals from all over the, like from all their respective fields. They have achieved much more and have given, uh, have won laurels in their field. Also, IMT has a legacy of over 40 plus years and consistently been driving results. 
so that was what motivated me and towards the institution right how is your uh, life at uh, imd gazabad show you know uh, do you do you have fun here do you miss lucknow or gazabad feels like uh, you know home away from home the gazabad feels like home away from home the only thing that i miss lucknow is definitely the street food there like lucknow is famous for its street food other than that campus provides ample opportunities for me throughout the day like it has good classes in the morning but the evening is almost fun it has activities all the clubs and committees keep on organizing various events that keep me engaged throughout the day right uh, harvinder uh, today we are uh, going to ask you guys the google's most asked question or i, I would say the most asked question about imt gazabad in general when we you know search online and the first question that comes to a lot of these minds is uh, you know imt gazabad is known for marketing but is it also good in the field of finance and if yes how oh uh, well see uh, not only imt gazabad if you look at any business school uh, marketing people constitute a majority of it in terms of organizations recruitment you will see there are more jobs in marketing i mean this makes sense fine because you need more people in sales marketing business development and less people in managing people and managing finances it's a no brainer now when it comes to core competence it's true that marketing is an amazing strong area i am from the marketing area so i, I definitely take pride in being a part of it but finance is an equally strong amazing area in fact this year you won't believe more than 30% job offers actually came in the field of finance we finished the we placed the entire batch in 15 days flat fine but finance people got placed within first week itself so we have two kinds of uh, programs we have a pgdm finance and we have banking and pgdm banking and financial services the response in the field, and we have a very strong team in the field of finance we have people who are senior professors and we have practitioners so we have people who have spent 30 35 years in multinational banks working at international locations and then they really move to teaching academics so marketing and finance both are equal strong at this point in time in imd gazabad right uh, i mean that you also teach uh, at imd gazabad so yes subject that you teach uh, about the faculty members uh, at imd gazabad how experienced are they you seeing that you know some of them come with a lot of experience they have worked in physics and they decided to part as a consultant education how how is that structure like at home i would like to talk about it for example if you look at my course portfolio kind of crazy things it also gives you an idea of why people would stick to imd i i'm a marketing faculty i teach co- courses in marketing i teach an elective called rural marketing i also teach an elective called channel management and interestingly okay. i also teach a course on geopolitics and business this is something that's closer to my heart i have got some background in this and imt gives me uh, this you know liberty to experiment with electives and courses uh, when it comes to uh, imt faculty honestly speaking uh, there's a clear cut line of distinction between institutions like imt who have a legacy and the newer ones in the sense that we have a wonderful mix of young and experienced faculty unlike many new business schools where you will see a lot of new and young faculty members but very few senior faculty members and i think location legacy and work environment has a lot to do with this so i have completed 12 years in imt gaziabad many of my colleagues have completed more than 20 years in imt gaziabad now when it comes to profile of a typical imt faculty uh, you will see uh, three kinds of faculty members so type 1 is an industry practitioner who has spent about 15 20 25 years in industry and then they move on to teaching some of them actually do a phd some don't do a phd but then uh, start teaching the other is hardcore academicians primarily youngsters so they are from top uh, uh, institutions like iims they do their fpm very good researchers in fact i'm i'm proud to share that uh, our professors are publishing articles in some of the top rated journals in the world journals that are rated a and a star and then in between there are a lot of faculty members who did not start their career in the industry they are academicians but in imt we get so many so much exposure we have got so many mdps coming 
that almost all of us end up interacting with industry for one training program or the other. For example, currently I am involved in two training programs. One is for an automobile company, the other is for a manufacturing enterprise. And the domain is primarily marketing and distribution. So hardcore academicians, academic credentials, hardcore practitioners with a sea of experience. And then you have a combination people who were academicians and gained practical exposure by industry interaction. It's Arvind, you mentioned that uh, you know, you're passionate about geopolitics and marketing. Uh, in the context of uh, Russia and Ukraine, if something comes to your mind that you have you know, imparted a class on very recently, and the, the kind of interaction that you saw, the participation that you saw, can you share a few glimpses of that? Uh, let me uh, see. Uh, my area of interest is geopolitics and marketing, obviously. I have mixed these two, and I'm a case writer, actually. I have published nearly a dozen cases with IV Publishing. Many of my cases are available on Harvard Business School publishing site also. So in context of uh, Russia and the ongoing crisis, I have published a case study called Nord Stream 2, a choice between uh, control and operating. So if you search on Google, you can actually get this. Uh, this is basically a pipeline, energy pipeline that Russia and Germany were planning to. It is actually almost done. But simply because of this Ukrainian crisis, this line is not operational. As a result of which, now EU is in energy crisis. Energy prices have actually gone five to ten times in many markets. So it's a very strange thing. There is a seller that has abundance of energy. There is a customer that has a, a huge requirement of it. But there is many a slip between the cup and the lip, as we say. And that has actually happened because geopolitics has created a situation where the buyer and seller, despite being available, willing, and everything else, only geopolitics comes in the way. When we see these terrible consequences come. And I plan to use this uh, case study in my course uh, this year. I invite you to my class. Please be a part of it that day. Okay. Sure, I would definitely uh, try and you know squeeze myself in in that classroom and learn a little more. Uh, from that classroom. Uh, Shubh, I'll uh, move to you. You know, uh, when you try and uh, be part of IMP Gazebad, fill that form and, you know, go on. Yeah, for that interview, what kind of questions are you asked in an IMP Gazebad interview? And how uh, should a candidate uh, like you, who's probably waiting right now for those interviews, uh, should prepare themselves? So, typically, questions that are framed in an IMP interview are around interpersonal communication skills. Now, so the institute is trying to like assess the sharpness of a student, the candidate, and try to uh, uh, see whether they have problem solving and analytical skills. Other than that, a student should definitely have domain knowledge and also knowledge about the current affairs and the ongoing business development in various fields. So I would definitely encourage the candidates to go to newspapers to keep on track with various information around the world. And also in the particular domain that he's applying for, uh, for example, he or she is applying for a marketing, uh, PGD marketing course, then he should be uh, like fluent in the terms that are used in marketing. Right. Uh, and, uh, you know, one more factor that comes in handy at this particular uh, juncture for a student when they're making that decision is whether they are going to be part of that particular institute. Is it a residential program? Are there hostels available? What are some of the facilities? Because that also comes in as a, a, a decider. You know, if I have to accommodate myself somewhere else, I have to arrange for those facilities. What What is that uh, like at IMT? So all the... Well, programs that are currently provided by IMT are framed as a full-time residential program. So it is mandatory for all the students to reside at the hotel, uh, hostel only, college hostel only. And as for the facilities, the facilities that we provide are a full-fledged gymnasium in the college itself. Other than that, we have 24-7 libraries and labs so as to ensure the overall development of a student. And also we have various indoor and outdoor sporting activities for students to unwind their minds in their free. Okay. Uh, I mean, I'll come back to you. Uh, you know, we were talking about uh, the kind of admissions that these students can get. She was telling us about the, the, the questions that you can expect or the kind of drilling that you guys probably do uh, of these various students. 
I have one question that I uh, saw on the internet and I found it interesting. It says, uh, I have scored between 85 to 90 percentile in GATT and I don't have a cracking academic record as well. Will IMTG consider me for a convert? Is a question probably a lot of these people will resonate with because a lot of these people after their GATT uh, scores have come out probably are feeling rejected. They might think that they might not get into a top B school. How is it like at IMTG? Going strictly by the care percentile, I must say no. Uh, the reason being uh, the cutoff for Andri Ghaziabad is generally uh, much higher. Uh, you must be aware of I mean, those who apply for it would know it. But we also realized one thing. Uh, our claims, you see, the CAT is a very competitive examination. 2,20,000 people appeared this time. And the scores are like a four to finish. Fine. So you have a couple of questions wrong. And your rank falls below a certain level, fine. So we realize that, uh, and we are not the only ones to think so. Many business schools feel that on a particular day, a person might end up committing the mistake and slip its rank by some places. So there is one option called profile-based shortlisting, uh, which is available at IMT Ghaziabad. Of course, we are not the first ones to do it. We are not the only ones doing it. There are some very good B schools in our peer group who have been doing it for quite some time. And the intention is if someone is really good in terms of uh, uh, personality, attitude, and skill set, we should not reject the person simply because the person messed up with a few questions on that particular day, that very moment. Uh, profile base is one option that, that's available. Otherwise, uh, if, we, if you are an average student, average performer, average in the interview, average profile, we don't even shortlist you. That's for sure. Right. Now, is there a ray for ray of hope for students? Uh, you know, who are uh, probably say, for example, who have given up their studies at some point because they are playing sports or something has happened in their personal lives, and there there are gap years that they have to justify. How does that look when it comes to admission? See, uh, I think you have to see it from the perspective of a recruiter, not a business school. So, if someone appears before a recruiter saying, "Look, I uh, I had a gap year," fine or I could not do something for. So the obvious question is, what was the reason? And did the person utilize that gap year judiciously, wisely? Fine. So if you can convince, see, I understand gap year uh, is actually a gray area. It's, it's, it's a trouble, a troublesome area. But if you have a convincing reason, and if you put that to good use, your chances are, I mean, the negative impact gets diluted to some extent. And overall, it's the, aggregate score in the selection list fine the multiple parameters gap year is one parameter it won't simply throw you out if you are good in other parameters uh, i have another interesting question uh, that somebody has asked uh, it says i have four years of work experience at a power plant maintenance uh, what mba specialization should i choose and which program should i go for at imt well, i'll say uh, Obvious uh, link is operations specialization. We do offer operations specialization. And for that, the person needs to get into PGDM full-time because PGDM full-time is a flexible program where you have the option of selecting either marketing, finance, operations, or HR as a specialization. Uh, the other uh, specialization that could be meaningful is the marketing because we get a lot of companies from manufacturing sector right, in B2B selling. Their companies look for people who have got excellent product knowledge, who are technically skilled and qualified. So with four years in plant, I think this gentleman must be having a better understanding of machines and uh, processes. So these two are pretty good. Apart from that, see, honestly speaking, nothing is impossible. Uh, it also depends on how you spend those two years on campus. Uh, that the engineers who do wonderful well in uh, finance also, or who are inclined towards HR. So... The kind of time you spent is also important, but operations and marketing seem to be direct linkages. If you also have uh, any such questions uh, who are watching this webinar right now, you can uh, type that in uh, on our chat box. We will definitely pick those questions. You can ask questions to me and who are here. Uh, you can ask questions in general about your percentiles as well and clarify those doubts if at all you have those doubts with Harvinder. As I mentioned earlier as well, and I'm reiterating that this is the Google's most asked question uh, about IMT Kasibad. And we have uh, 
cherry pick a few of these very uh, you know pertinent questions so that uh, we can address these questions of queries that you have in and come up with answers. Right, uh, so let's come back to you. You know, you're a marketing uh, student. At what point in your career do you think that you know marketing wanted to build up on? Uh, did IMP Gazebad come as a natural choice for you? or uh, when you wanted to do this in the end, uh, what are some of the things that you are learning here that probably you think is going to stay with you for long? So I need mind regarding marketing. Since I was a, like, I was a kid because I belong from a family of business background. So therefore I was naturally interested towards business and sales and marketing. Therefore I made up my mind regarding that. Other than that, while applying for colleges, I am bought Apple Choice because it is definitely a college known for its marketing course. And then uh, the things that I have learned in the classroom as we follow a case learning pedagogy. So therefore, I think that those are the uh, like those are the basics that have been inculcated into me. And I would definitely remember them throughout my corporate life and would definitely use that use those. Uh, use those uh, learning that junctures that would help me drive my way forward. Did any specific class, any specific uh, you know case study uh, in, in the classroom that you have learned that uh, you can remember or you think that has been like a like a game changer for you in terms of marketing that you must have gone through in these years? So talking about a particular case study, first of all, I would like to point out that I was taught by Zavinder Sarandi, marketing student one. In the case study was named Southwest Airlines, wherein they told us about the various intricacies that the airlines faced and how they went on uh, throughout the process and how they were able to like uh, motivate their employees and change their operations to facilitate the need, the growing need, wherein they inculcated lower cost fares, shorter time runs for the airplane, and other uh, like intricate things so as to favor their own rising. Right. Uh, you know, also uh, a lot of students have this question also before selecting a school is uh, how big uh, a batch is, how how much of attention they're going to get from these faculty members or people who are going to be them in, in the particular class. So what is the, you know, uh, strength right now at IMT, uh, what is the batch size like? Uh, for now, I mean, the program that you are part of, if you can talk about that. And for others, if you have figures, you can share that. So, uh, particularly talking about my batch, batch of 2123, there are 523 students enrolled into our batch. The batch size, uh, the overall batch size is 600, but there are 523 students enrolled into our batch. Other than that, we have a great faculty to student ratio. So, all the students get individual attention from the faculty. Also, the faculty have their own meeting slot. They, they are dedicated 20. Uh, they are dedicated two hours within a day, wherein the student can go to their faculty room and interact with their faculty and get their doubts cleared. So it is a win-win situation for every right. student. It, uh, it, it is a win-win situation for uh, students like show. Uh, how do you see the, uh, the, the student relation, the student-faculty relationship to me? Uh, how accessible are you as a faculty member uh, to these students? I uh, heard show uh, remembering a class that uh, you have taught him, but uh, I mean, beyond classroom, how, what kind of relationship do you share with these students? Uh, well, IMT students are demanding to the extent of being merciless. Uh, in, the, in the sense that, see, uh, we have classroom interactions 30 hours per course, then for each course we are supposed to have certain hours reserved. But then uh, students do visit us. Uh, for example, we have projects assigned. All these projects need to be discussed with each group. Students come. But the best part is uh, IMT Ghaziabad in general is known for its excellence in case study competitions. So there are about a couple of dozen case study competitions all over India where India's top campuses are invited by invitation. IMT Ghaziabad by default happens to be one of them. And our students every year, they are on the leaderboard in almost all those competitions. And what happens is these guys, they're very smart. What they do is they'll, they'll appear for those uh, case case study competitions and then they will catch a faculty saying, look, okay, this is uh, uh, distribution management. Okay, let me catch her in the thing. Then they'll approach, sir, uh, we want your time. And then imagine one meeting, second meeting, third meeting. At times, I'm interacting with them online at 9 p.m. Uh, sometimes a meeting happens in my campus, somewhere in the classroom. So uh, 
all the faculty members, I mean, I am recalling my experience, but almost all the faculty members actually end up interacting with students for these cases. There's a third element. So classroom and projects, case study competitions. Apart from that, IMT has, I think, a couple of dozen uh, clubs and committees. Each club or a committee is mentored by a faculty. So eventually that also becomes a platform where faculty and students interact. Sometimes we feel it's too much of faculty interaction, but then, you know, there's never too much of uh, it. Let them have it as much as they want. I mean, uh, good to hear that, that the faculty is involved as much as probably the students are. I mean, uh, I, I, I can say from the student side of things that uh, sometimes they never get to sleep as well because of the kind of work that they have or the kind of assignments and lecture and the pressure that they have from these very faculty members. So. Uh, I would say that it's a win-win or a balanced situation between you guys. So I have a question from Bhavya has received uh, on, on the chat box. She had actually asked a lot of them. I will read out one. Uh, is knowledge of advanced Excel a must? Uh, had some had read some article where it was mentioned by some alum that you have to have advanced Excel knowledge in order to be part of an institute. So the question is for me or for Shubh? Whoever wants to go ahead. Yeah. So um, I would definitely say that pre knowledge of Excel is not needed because we have an orientation program uh, wherein we provide these courses. Uh, we give knowledge about these courses like statistics, Excel, and other uh, basic structures that are needed to excel in the upcoming MBA course. So, Bhavya, uh, I would definitely say that we do not need much knowledge about it, but uh, a bit. They can ask about it, would definitely help you within the interview. Team. So, all the best. I have one question for you that uh, is part of the Google's most search questions that uh, you know uh, I, I am just going through. Uh, what makes IMT Gazawa different from the likes of the new and baby IMs uh, or any other private B schools uh, that are in place in India? There are many, the last I counted, probably. Forget about it. I mean, I don't even have the counts of the schools that are coming up. Uh, what makes IMD Gazeva different? What makes it stand out? Uh, so the answer is uh, long, detailed. I, mean, I have so many things to uh, say after having spent 12 years in this campus. So the first thing is uh, the institution and its legacy. So any institution, not only IMD Gazeva, any institution which is more than four decades older, would have legacy systems. We are talking of body of knowledge, systems and processes, curriculum. For example, if I may say one thing, our curriculum is time tested. And it's not that we open a college and then you know we patch up content from here and there. Our courses are refined over decades. Then our linkage with the industry is amazing for two reasons. Number one, as Shubh was mentioning earlier, we have a huge body of alumni. Right? who are actually available at a phone call. I'm not, for my courses, actually, I, I invite my, my students. 10 years, 12 years uh, uh, earlier, I taught them. They're so responsive, I tell you. They're so responsive. I mean, I have arranged sessions for them at 7.38 p.m. in the evening. So they'll complete their office in Gurgaon, travel for a couple of hours, come, deliver a session, and then drive back to Gurgaon. So this is the level of commitment our alums have. The other location itself, please understand we are in uh, Ghaziabad, part of Delhi NCR. Gurgaon is a couple of hours, traffic is a nuisance, but still it's manageable. Faridabad, Noida, Greater Noida. So we're looking at multiple, and Ghaziabad itself, Saibabad and all that, itself is a mini cluster. So we are talking of uh, industry connect, which is amazing. If students have to do their projects, they can reach an industry in a matter of an hour maximum. If industry people need to come to us, they can reach us in the same time. So that's one thing. Faculty, I've told you, it's it's actually amazing. I mean, see, it, it's, it's good to have young faculty, and we do have them, because they are the ones who bring fresh ideas, fresh skills, technical skills, analytics, and digital marketing are, 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 are uh, you know, strong areas now, because our young faculty colleagues are doing it. But we have an equally good number of equally good senior faculty. And they act as the link between industry and the students. So uh, I think I could uh, mention these points in the last few minutes. Do you want me to speak more? Uh, 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, if you are happy with your answer, then we'll uh, go forward. If you want to add more, definitely. I mean, I mean so this is kind of a question that comes in again and again as to what see, makes it better see, than say a baby I am or a new I am. See, I don't want to speak. I really appreciate Brad I am. They are really good uh, places. And I, as I told you, in many baby I am's, new I am's, my faculty colleagues are working as 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 with the teaching there. See one big and I also had the option of joining uh, some of these uh, baby amps a uh, long back. But I mean, if you understand, if you are at a location which is maybe 500, 700 kilometers away from industry, you cannot have that kind of interaction because in a business school, your interaction with industry has to be regular every day. It can't be once in a fortnight, once in a month. Fine. So it's actually, and the other thing is these uh, new institutions will not have their alumni. Right? So, I mean, how large would be the alumni base? So if, if we have to invite a CEO or a CMO or a CTO or a CFO, we have a list of CXOs, correct? We can actually request our ALCOM, alumni committee, to please help us and invite the person. And the person comes. Right. I mean, it, it's very difficult for these baby ams to have an alum who is a CEO. That, that's an issue, correct? Right. Absolutely. Uh, Shubh, I uh, was going to ask you a similar question, you know, about the alumni. Uh, how strong do you feel this alumni base to be? Uh, can you, you know, quantify the kind of things that have been said? Have you seen that happening in the two years that you have spent on uh, the campus? What sort of alumni members actually have visited on campus and how helpful has it been uh, for you in terms of learning, in terms of, in general, networking better in the time that you have spent? So talking about our alumni, they are definitely very helpful. And we have a large alumni base wherein all of them are eager to like deliver their promises to their alma mater. So they do visit the campus, they do alumni connect sessions wherein they deliver speeches to us, talk, at, uh, talk about their uh, experiences in the corporate industry, how their experiences can help drive our future. Etc. Uh, two main alums that I remember in this, uh, the sessions that I interacted with and attended are of Ms. Arsana Rawat, where she is the managing director of Accenture, and Mr. Nilendra Singh, he is the managing director of Adidas India. These are the two sessions that I distinctively remember I attended. But how how helpful uh, does these kind of interactions become with students? Uh, uh, you know, and does it happen quite often? Do you get to meet them? Uh, you know. In, in general, have a word with them, try and understand what's happening in their industry and the sector and the kind of companies that they work in. So, uh, other than the alumni connect sessions, it's LinkedIn that we can use that the platform to connect with our alums. Uh, uh, as pointed out by Helvinder, sir, the alumni relationship committee keeps on providing us an opportunity to interact with our alums. Uh, they do give us uh, their contact numbers if we need them. They do provide us with opportunities during our placements where we can connect with our alums to like have their views as to how we should apply for the company, how we should stand out within the crowd, and how we should have a profile that is very aligned to what the company needs. So these are the uh, certain helps that our alumni deliver to us during our placement. And um, not only placement, also in the academic space. Correct, absolutely. Uh, Bhavya has asked one question, you know, when you ask uh, Google about the kind of alums uh, of IMT Gazebar, the few prominent names come uh, up again and again. Mini Mathur, Das Joshi, Sachin Pilot, Prashun Joshi. There are few names that are associated with it. I, I don't know whether these will have been part of IMT Gazebar or not. You guys probably are the better people to tell us whether these people are part of the IMT Gazebar alumnus. And do they come back on campus in any regard or have they been part of uh, you know these interactions uh, before? This is a question open to both Hadinder, you and Shub, if you guys have any. Well, there is no, see, uh, uh, if names are floating on uh, social media, there is no reason to disbelieve, fine? Right? Obviously, right. right. Uh, in fact, normally we believe that social media does a lot of survey, research, criticism, and then they put the names on the uh, uh, platforms. Uh, when it comes to uh, alumni engagement, honestly speaking, when we talk of industry engagement, nearly half of it actually comes to our alums. And as uh, she was mentioning, see, alumni or industry in general interact at multiple levels. So at the level of individual faculty, we have uh, alumni coming and helping us with the sessions as well as projects. 
last year I ran an elective rural marketing in which I wanted to give live projects. And almost all the projects were given by our alumni in their companies, right? So that's one part of it. At the area level, we have area advisory committees. So each academic area has an advisory committee, which has industry representatives and senior professors from other big business schools. So invariably, in these cases, the industry representative is a senior alum, a CEO, CFO, CMO, and all that. Fine. Apart from that, we keep on inviting them for industry connect sessions. We invite them. Achha, uh, IMT has a number of events happening. For example, uh, uh, each club or committee mark is an event. You know, sports, they also have an event. Sports committee is an event. For all these events, we invite these poker jabs on Saturdays, Sundays as judges, as speakers. So they are a part of student events also. Then we have our mega events like convocations and uh, orientation programs or inaugural of a session. There again, we invite them. So I believe if you talk of about 10 month cycle of uh, business program, fine. You will see uh, alumni pitching in almost every month in one capacity or the other. And the list is long. I mean, we need not call the same alumni all the time. We call the person once, maybe his turn comes two years later because we have a long list of alumni. Right. Lovely. Uh, Harvinder, let's talk about, uh, you know, you take care of admissions. So what do you look for in a candidate selection? I'm sure you get a large pool of admission uh, requests every year. And uh, although the batch size is huge, I'm, uh, I'm sure, I mean, if you're the best person to tell me, what is the selection ratio like? Like how many candidates do you reject and how many do you select? Oh, and based of what and uh, what is the common selection process? If I have to ask you, is this like a common selection process across other IMT campuses as well that you take care of, or just for this particular campus? Uh, see, the process is common simply because we want to make uh, use of uh, resources uh, optimally. So when we talk of a student, fine. Um, I must say we look for what we have in Shubh Agarwal, fine. So we look for all the qualities that Shubh has. That is why he's a part of this uh, interaction. So uh, see, uh, let's talk about, he talked about communication earlier. He talked about uh, uh, general awareness. He talked about domain knowledge. But overall, if I tell you, the crux of everything is the future employability. Now, when we say future employability, please understand, we are not looking for a placement-ready candidate. We are not looking for someone whom we can place the next day. We are looking for someone who has the right attitude to learn and undergo modifications. Point is, when it comes to knowledge, I think we can impart. Right. So the right attitude Eager, you know, eagerness to learn, openness to new ideas. And, you know, when we interact with students, we actually ask them questions about their past. And many a times people thought uh, they are uh, checking our memory. I mean, making us recall our past. No, we actually want students to give us instances from their past. And through those examples or instances, we try to infer whether the person is adaptable, has learned things in past. Because if we bring him to our campus during those two years, would he be assimilating knowledge and skills? Adaptability, learning capability, positive attitude. Of course, communication, confidence, all these things are the bare bones. We, we need. Definitely. Uh, so, I mean, that I'm going to take a few questions uh, that I've received uh, around admissions itself. Uh, Shojit Ray is uh, saying that uh, his profile is 88, 85, 85. He's a non-engineer male. He does not have any work ex. Uh, he has 98.3 percentile in CAT. Any chances of his convert? Or if you want to ask any questions to uh, Shubhajit also, basis this profile, uh, how better are his chances? See, because there are many questions. So let me be give him a ray of hope. Begin with 95.3, you said, correct? Yeah, 98.3. 8.3. So uh, uh, he qualifies to be uh, uh, shortlisted for IMT Ghaziabad, so he should feel happy about it, fine, number one. But if someone with 98.3 percentile comes before me, I would be naturally curious to test him, saying, look, how good thorough the person is. So uh, this is the uh, last qualification graduation. So he is a non-engineer. He has not 
yeah, he has not mentioned Bonnie and Bradley. No, this makes the job very interesting, actually. I mean, most of us are tuned to interviewing engineers. All good these schools get back some engineer applicants, correct? So whenever non-engineer reports are eyes light up, and chances of selection actually increase versus not really bad. Right. So domain knowledge, we will sure check. We would also want to ask about general awareness. We would also want to know whether the person, though non-engineer, does he have some understanding of technology? Hmm. Was the guy the commerce person? Fine. So first, I would like to relate. Uh, I'd like to ask. How much of technology is he used, understood in the field of commerce? For example, right. in terms of software packages, you know, accounting packages and all that. Right? And overall commission, confidence that we surely check and test. Right. Uh, another question, Pragna is asking, I've got 98% dial in CAT. Honestly, never wanted to do an MBA if it wasn't from IM. But listening to you feels like uh, can give IMT a shot. Uh, what is the cutoff, and is there anything needed in the profile? Pragna has not mentioned anything about uh, his or her profile in this, uh, so I would request Pragna if you can uh, do that and uh, write a bit about uh, your profile. But yeah, I mean, 98 percentile seems like something where uh, he or she has a chance or give. Pragna, uh, consider this as a personal invite from me. Let us interact over the interview. Whether you join IM, IMT or not, that's your choice. Let's have an interaction. So I invite you. To be a part of the interview process, right? Uh, Shubha, there is one question for you. Uh, if somebody wants to know that, uh, according to you, what's the best part about the campus? I mean, campus life is something where uh, a lot of students base their distance of joining a campus. In I uh, have recently been to a campus where students have said that because this campus had a swimming pool, I decided to join this campus. So anything of that sort, if uh, it is was there at IMP Gaziabad or in your mind if you want to you know share with our so for me personally amphitheater was the best place that I consider in IMP Gaziabad it's the place where we after regular classes we go there we take a cup of coffee we interact with our peers we talk about the daily routine or all the assignments that our professors are given to submit within the next day. Something like that. We basically more rant about affairs there and then we try to resolve it there. So that's the best spot for me in that regard. Right. Uh, so, and what about uh, you, Avinda? Do you also stay in the campus itself or uh, do you? Uh, I would love to, but. Uh... Unfortunately, IMP does not have enough space for faculty accommodation. Uh, and in fact, most people in Delhi and CR have their own accommodation at the place of their choice. And it's so well connected, honestly. So uh, we live out of campus. But yes, uh, as I was saying, uh, amphitheater is one place. When when alums come, you know what, uh, when they come for batch reunions, if it's winter, they make sure to have a bonfire in the amphitheater. And uh, Nescafe is another point I think uh, that you would uh, uh, like appreciate. And uh, recently in the new academic building on the ground floor, we have got those uh, granite slabs, benches, that also becomes a good meeting place for people to have a chat. Right. Pragna has updated that uh, she's a graduate and uh, currently doing an internship in a marketing role. Uh, I don't think that's a lot of information, but Pragna, yeah, you can check the link that's there probably in the comment box as well. No more about the institute and the kind of questions that you have, probably that will get uh, addressed there. Talking uh, about programs, uh, Harvinda, there is a DCP and a BFS program that's also there that's uh, inquired, inquired about quite a lot on uh, Google as well. And I'm sure that a lot of inquiries come to you as well, apart from, uh, you know, although I know, I know for a fact that you manage PDM, but these are few courses that I have to offer. So let's talk a little bit about that. So BFS is the emerging star in the sense that it's a specially designed course which has got electives or, or programs which are very specific and very unique, not well normal MBA finance courses. The other thing is this program is designed in collaboration with the top European business school, Vletic Business School, which is again a leading name in the field of finance. Uh, in fact, uh, the team behind BFS is actually a practitioner's team. If I, I mean, you can actually go to the website and check the names. We actually have a team of senior professors who have come from industry, people with 35 years experience, uh, you know, have playing global roles all across the world. Fine. So, and this year, as I told you, more than 30% options offers came for 
banking and finance and finance per se. I mean, at one point in time, in the placement week, we had more offers than applicants. So that was the scenario in uh, finance and BFS. Right. BFS is it, it's an amazing program now. Uh, we are very selective. We have a sanctioned strength of 60. But this year, we had 49. We have dropped 11 seats. I mean, we didn't compromise on the quality. Otherwise, you reduce the cutoff by half a percent point, and then you get all the seats filled. We didn't do that. DCP is another program. It's a 10-year-old program, actually. Now, this program was uh, created with a very uh, unique intention. Normally, we see that our students, most of our students end up having a global role within two, three years. Fine. In fact, almost all of them have global clients in the very first, second year itself. Now, for interacting with them, people have to go by some experience. Fine. Cross-cultural understanding is very important. Now, most business schools have one component called international exchange. Now, what happens in an international exchange is students go to a foreign university, a European university. The campuses are outside the city. Students travel, fly, live in the campus. And there they interact only with the students and the professors. Okay. Fine. So there is no real immersion per se, though the program is called immersion. Fine. So... DCP as a program was designed in such a way that for one complete year, students would actually live in an international location. And the most easiest, convenient, economical and adaptable location was Dubai. Right. Because that is a place where you get people from close to 190 nationalities. Yeah. I mean, I happened to be in Dubai for a couple of years uh, on deputation to our Dubai campus. And honestly speaking, um, I'm, when you travel on the road, you travel in public transport. So you have a Pakistani, you have a Bangladeshi, you have a Filipino serving food to you. You go to an office, you have an American or a Danish people greeting you. I mean, it, it's actually global. So you need to, you, you tend to learn how to move around, how to interact, how to behave. Right. And you understand their body language. And overall, when it comes to the academic inputs, the qualities, the quality is strongly vetted by IMT Ghaziabad. DCP is an IMT Ghaziabad program. So inputs and a curriculum is uh, mentored by IMT Ghaziabad. One year delivery happens in Dubai. One year happens purely in Ghaziabad. So best of both the worlds, right? Lovely. Uh, best of both worlds indeed. And, uh, you know, is uh, PJDM or, or does PJDM also have any international exchange or immersion program that's there, which is yes, part yes. of it? How, uh, you know, long is this particular immersion and what all are the components that are associated with it? Like, is is it in, in the fees or in, does the student so, have to you know, arrange so, for so it? This is, this is basically a conventional exchange program, which has its own limitations, I must say. We have about 53 international partners. So normally this happens uh, in, in Jan to March wala term in first year. So term three okay. is normally uh, that term. So students have to, so each uh, partner would announce number of slots that they have available. Fine. So there's no unlimited availability. There's limited availability. Okay. Then uh, students need to apply for. And in most cases for top business schools, you will have uh, more applicants than number of seats. Then we have a formal process of interviews. So there's a panel of faculty. We interview students because we want to check a few things. We want to send our best students to the top raised uh, partners so that our relationship actually grows. And then, of course, it, it's actually a term-long exchange, which is about a 10 to 12 weeks sort of arrangement. Students go, fly, they pick their courses there, complete, get the grades over there. Those grades are converted to Indian grades when they come back. That's it. Right. Lovely. Uh, I mean, then now we come to the next segment of uh, this particular webinar, uh, which is the segment around placements, which is the segment around companies that come in and the ROI of the particular MBA program that you offer these students. Uh, you know, the first question that I came across and which, you know, uh, made me ask this question to you also is IMT placement over inflated. Well, Purnanshu, it's a very uh, easy allegation. I mean, you can uh, uh, put this allegation on anyone, including Ahmedabad. Please understand. Uh, can you over-inflate data or numbers when you are being watched or scrutinized by a dozen people? Yeah. So we are an institution 
effectively under control of the ICTE. We have to give data and give declarations. Then we are certified, we are rated by NBA. Then we are part of NIRF uh, uh, rankings. Then we are AACSB accredited. We have SACS accreditation. So honestly, on our campus every year, we end up having at least one or the other committee visiting. Right. When they come, every committee would invariably look at placement data. They get all the placement numbers, names, and telephone numbers of students. They check actual offer letters. Actual offer letters because students are supposed to keep a, give a copy of uh, that to us. All these things are tallied. So point is, I mean, we are not uh, doing and declaring all these things under uh, behind a bush. It is something which is in public domain. And even if we wish to, we cannot hide this information. We will, I mean, the authorities will come and hang us by the neck. It's practically not possible for any reputed business school. Forget about IMT. It's very difficult for any business school to inflate or overinflate. Inflate itself was enough. I don't know why people use overinflate. Fine. So it's difficult to inflate uh, placement numbers. Right. Uh, and and uh, we were talking about uh, the kind of agencies that come in and uh, scrutinize the processes that's there. Uh, let's talk about uh, the overall ranking that your institute also has and the accreditations that uh, uh, you guys have. I can see an AACSB accreditation in the logo itself. So that clarifies the doubt. Uh, but apart from that, uh, what are the accreditations that this particular institute and the programs that it offers has? And how valuable is that for students when they're making that decision of joining a place? So when it comes to India, we are talking of NBA as an accrediting agency. So NBA has given us top accreditation. That's for sure. So NBA ensures that our systems, processes, and our systems, processes, content, and delivery is strictly as per the norms prescribed by the regulator. That's one thing. When we talk of AACSB, AACSB is more uh, futuristic in its orientation. And the very uh, the best advantage of having an AACSP logo on your degree is when you go international, when you go abroad, internationally, AACSB is a much better, much known logo than AICTE. People would not know AICTE. So if you say my degree is approved by AICTE, it does not mean anything to them. Right. But to tell them that my degree is AACSB accredited, then of course they can resonate. Because almost all uh, good business schools in North America and Europe are AACSB accredited. So that's a clear advantage students have. Right. Uh, Shubh, I'll uh, come to you in terms of placements. I'm hoping that you are also placed right now. If yes, uh, if you want to disclose that which company or sector or industry you are joining uh, or are part of already, what kind of companies do come to, uh, you know, IMD Gazabad for placements? Uh, what are the highest recruiting sector this particular year? If you have any figures that you can share with us. I know you're an admission committee member, but I'm sure you must have gotten these information from uh, your place comp buddies. So if you can share those with us today. So definitely, Paul, I'm placed. I'm placed at a raw material procurement firm. And other than that, there are many sectors to recruit from IT. Some of them, naming some of them, they are FMCG, consumer product, automobile, manufacturing, DSSI, IT, IT, etc. And the highest offers that were generated, as Havinder sir pointed out, it was generated from the DSSI segment. About 34% of the offers were generated from this segment. Other than that, top 20, uh, top 20% of the offers were generated from DSSI, ITES, consulting, and consumer care. Right. Uh, in terms of roles, uh, show if you can, uh, you know, talk a little bit about uh, what kind, what kind of roles these students get in general from these very companies, because that also becomes an important aspect. Uh, I mean, that if you want to add quickly to what uh, Shub has to say, uh, you can do that. Yeah. Well, uh, let uh, Shub start, and then uh, of course I'll, I'll add on the okay. So some of the roles that are offered to IT students are of sales and marketing, financial risk and advisory general management and leadership, market research, consulting, uh, project management, product management, uh, equity research, and if I would like to point out any others, those are the ones I remember from my peers. I think that that's too much for people to digest, actually. That's that's good enough. 
because we have listed all the prominent roles that an MBA aspirant would look for. Right. Absolutely. So, uh, uh, there is a question from Shri, is, uh, which is a brand that has been longest associated with IMD Gajabad. Is there some uh, brand of that sort or a company of that sort that you have seen coming back again and again and recruiting students from the campus? Okay. Um, uh, let me give you a number. Fine. So, this year we had more than 150 uh, recruiters. And we had nearly half of them as new recruiters. For the simple reason that every year we want to take the average up. So every year we drop Deadwood. Fine. And then we add new companies. That's why that's the only way you can push your package up. Okay? So nearly half the a lot of recruiters is actually the old recruiters. Fine. And uh, Godrej, GCPL, uh, I'm a marketing guy, so I will recall more of uh, uh, consumer goods. So I recall Merico, I recall uh, Godrej Consumer, I recall Wipro. Fine. Um, Lori Levier, our students go. I mean, so all these are names. Lovely. Uh, Arvinder, uh, Shob, if you guys have any numbers so far, I don't know whether the placement reports are out or not, if there are average, median, or highest salaries that uh, you guys are projecting right now in your placement figures. If that has happened, if you can, you know, uh, enlighten our audience about that, because a lot of these decisions of joining a B school, you know, rests on the kind of salary or the package that they're going away from, from this particular institute. So if you can uh, put some light on it. So uh, last two years have been amazing for placements at IMT Gazi, but uh, so both the years we have actually broken records of previous years. 17.35 is the average this year, which is a 14% increase over the previous year. Last year we had a 20% hike. We crossed 15 lakh for the first time. So 17.35 is a reasonable uh, number. Uh, one thing I want to tell everyone, look, you are not, I mean, you, you don't do an MBA for, for a one year long career or two year long career. You're supposed to work for 30 years. Fine. This is the starting block. IMT gives you a very good starting block. 17.35 this year is not bad. But the real crux is it gives you a head start over others. So when you talk of 10, 15, 20 years down the line, you are actually much ahead. The other thing is, look, when you uh, appear for an interview, your CV has IMT Ghaziabad mentioned on it. Chances are, during screening process within the organization, someone who handles your CV would also have the same logo on his or her CV. Because there are thousands of IMTNs are in fine. And if you compare that with the new institutions, honestly speaking, so the probability of your CV handled by an alum of yours increases greatly in case of B schools like IMT. And we are not the only one. There are other colleges also, which are good, which are old, which have got a large alumni base. So that should be kept in mind. You don't appear for a job interview once, correct? Your campus interview is not your only interview. You have to do it more than once in your life, outside campus also. This is where your Alma Mater's brand comes handy. Lovely. Okay, uh, Shob, uh, you know, um, as much as academics is part of your life, as much as placement is part of your life, uh, extracurricular is also part of your life at a B-School. And uh, I've received one question and I wanted to ask you as well, uh, you know, what sort of uh, life do you have in terms of extracurriculars? Do you also uh, take part in it actively? Uh, is there an annual fest that everybody knows about? Uh, at Andy Gazabad, it's the time of the festivals for sure. And uh, uh, you know, are you are you gearing up for any of those any times? So we have an annual fest at Andy Gazabad. It's called Passion. We conclude that uh, in the recent time, and we we get many talented comedians to do. Like uh, taking some prominent names, we had Rahul Dua, we had Nisan Suri, we had Hasni Solanki. So we keep on getting engaged into these activities. Uh, various clubs and committees do dwell deep into these activities. We compete within ourselves for titles, for glory, for just sheer fun of it. Other than that, uh, we do have sporting too. We organize the largest B school uh, uh, sporting event. It is known as Olympic B school. And we term it as Chakravi, wherein four in-hand teams and other participating colleges compete for the ultimate title. 
So it is a three-day event. We are going to organize it in February. We have launched the uh, we have launched uh, the pre-screening process for that. And uh, uh, to be said, uh, sun never sets in IMT. It is a campus where you can't have more of sleep. You will get interacted. You will get indulged into various things. The whole day would be passing out throughout. Like you would not be counting hours. You would just be counting the days that are gone by, and you would be reminiscing the moments that are gone by. Lovely. Uh, Harvinder, one last question. Before. Yeah, sure, sure. One thing about Chakraview, Chakraview is better described as 72-hour non-stop event. Right. So at 3.30 a.m., some event would still be going on, non-stop. Right. Yes, your question. So, so Harvinder, uh, one last question before uh, we end this particular session today. Uh, you know, one piece of advice that you have for students who are looking up for these schools, what should be they uh, looking for? You know, you mentioned that it's not just the placement figures. It's not just, uh, you know, uh, the kind of numbers that are associated, associated with it, basis which you do your ROI. It's a long-term game. It's a, it's, a, it's a game where, you know, your worth of a B-School is defined by the kind of people who are part of this particular uh, institute and who can meet you outside the B-School and, you know, pave the pay path for you or help you in growing further. So what is your, uh, you know, opinion or advice or suggestion to these people who are at the crossroads probably and are not sure uh, where to go from your to pursue their B-School education? Uh, well, Nangshu, I think uh, being the last question, I should step out of IMT shoes and talk like a faculty professor. Yeah. Huh? And I have two things to say. You select whatever business school you want. It could be IMT, it may be something else. Please take care of two things. Number one, you pick up a school that gives you skills for tomorrow. Right. I mean, long run. Do not look for a business school that gives you skills for your first job, right? So look for skills that come handy in the long run because career is very long. And number two, an extension of point number one, don't look for a placement, look for a career. Right? These two things, have a long-term perspective. Right. And think, with that thing in mind, you may choose any business school, your decision would be correct. Lovely. Thank you very much, uh, Harvinder uh, Shog, for taking our time and doing this with us today. I'm sure the people who are, uh, you know, watching us live or who are going to watch us later on, once this uh, is in the form of videos on our channel, are going to find this useful. Uh, they are definitely going to uh, make their decision, or at least if this is going to help them make their mind as to whether this is a B school they would like to join or not. If you guys want to know more about this particular institute and the programs, as I mentioned, there is a link in the description. Go check that out. Uh, do tell us in the comments below how you liked uh, the conversation and uh, what you want us to improve on next. Thank you very much for asking those questions as well. Uh, this is for the people who have asked these questions and uh, kept this conversation going and uh, fun and interactive. Thank you once again, Harvinder and uh, Shobhan. Have a 